Lisa, human beings throughout our history have always wanted to know the, the real reality of what's, what's it all about, how is it all made. Physics has made just such enormous progress. Walk us through how physics can show us how everything the cosmos is constructed. <laughs> um, how do we think about this? Well, this, I guess there's two different ways we can be thinking about how the cosmos is constructed. One is to understand what the fundamental ingredients are. What is at the basic core of matter, of everything that we see? Right. What are the elements that constitute our universe? Um, the other is to think about the cosmos as a whole, to think about big things, to sort of average over large distances and see what we observe. And of course, the great thing about physics is that if we get it right, um, these two should be connected. Mm -hmm. So the science of elementary particle physics, which is what I'm doing a lot of the time, should be connected to the science of the evolution of the universe, which is to say cosmology. And of course, both of them will be wrapped up with other basic questions like what is space-time? Oh, what is space? How many space dimensions, spatial dimensions are there? Just what is the uni what is sort of the stage for all of this happening, for mm -hmm. the particle physics happening, for the uh, cosmology to happen? Mm -hmm. So we have some ideas in both particle physics and cosmology that have worked incredibly well. Um, cosmology has really turned into a, a real science in the last century, as in many ways has uh, particle physics with the developments of general relativity and quantum mechanics and special relativity, we were able to make great advances in understanding these. And we now understand the standard model of particle physics, which tells us the basic elements of matter, um, which we think are quarks and leptons, particles like the electron, particles like quarks, which are inside protons, which are in turn inside atom. Um, that, so we have these basic ingredients. We think there are four forces, at least we know of four forces through which they interact, uh, gravitation, the electromagnetism and the weak and strong nuclear forces. And so we know about these forces. So we know these elements are there. Um, but we also know from studying cosmology that there is stuff we haven't seen. Um, we know that there's dark matter, matter, stuff that really is matter, uh, clumps, etc. But it doesn't emit light. We don't know what it is. It's probably not one of these standard model ingredients. In fact, it's definitely not one of these standard model ingredients. And dark energy, which is an energy that permeates the universe. Um, again, 70% of the energy of the universe, but we don't know what it is. Um, we don't know why it's there. But we can measure that it's there through its gravitational effects. In fact, gravity is the one thing that unifies all of these different things that we can see because they well, all have a, an effect one way or another on gravity. So gravity seems to be a little more equal than everything else in terms of its uh, importance. Um, it, just in the sense that every energetic or massive object interacts with right. gravity. Right. It's not necessarily true with other forces. For example, we have the strong nuclear force. Particles called leptons, like the electron, don't experience the strong nuclear force, mm -hmm. whereas every particle, every element of matter and energy we know about experiences gravity. Mm -hmm. so, um, so there are then are different approaches you can take. You can try to keep going deeper inside matter to understand what it, are, are the forces we see related at some more fundamental level. Are the masses we see related at some more fundamental level? Can we understand mysteries like why the forces have such different strength? Like gravity is so much weaker than the other forces. Or we can study cosmology and ask how these ingredients enter as the universe evolves. And even um, more conceptual developments involving fields which permeate the universe have entered both in particle physics and cosmology. So this tie-in between particle physics and cosmology is really quite intriguing and, and seems to work. So let's so. pursue each one briefly in terms of particle physics. What are some of the advances that have been made that seem to relate to some of the, the, the cosmological observations? Well, for example, what the standard model was put together. We understood the weak nuclear force, the strong nuclear force. And um, you can look at the element abundances, uh, the, relative element, the relative abundance of various elements. Mm -hmm. And understanding those forces helps us to understand those, and we can look out and measure I say we, me, my experimental colleagues, and you can see that the abundances agree with what is predicted. Such as so the ratio it. between the hydrogen and, and helium, helium, for example. In the early universe. Right. Uh, you're Primordial able hydrogen and helium. You can, you can predict how those, what those relative abundances should be based on, for example, the weak nuclear force. And, and you predict that and just the out of, the, theory. Out of the, the standard model of particle well, physics? Well, we also have a theory of cosmology, which tells us how the universe right. expands given a certain amount of 
energy density in the universe. And you put those together and you get a successful prediction. It's quite amazing. And, and they're, they're independent predictions to, to go to that? Some, some from the, the, the structure of, the, of, of particle physics and the weak nuclear force and also from cosmological predictions? Or is it, is it one prediction? or is Well, it this is just different? an example of where they tie together. Mm -hmm. um, there are also predictions having just to do with cosmology, for example. We can look at the expansion of the universe. The expansion of the universe, there could be... There's, we believe there's radiation in the early universe. We know how that radiation changes and cools down as the universe expands. And based on that, uh, it, we can uh, do a self-consistent theory so we can figure out what the expansion of the universe should be at early times. So we can look back and see what the Hubble expansion was. Uh, you can look back and look at the cosmic microwave, microwave background radiation, which is the radiation left over from the early universe. It started off very hot, but as the universe expanded, the radiation cooled down. So the three degree microwave background radiation on the sky is some indication that the theory of cosmology is correct. It's really fascinating how the independent development of particle physics and cosmology, the, 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 the most small and the most large, mm -hmm. actually are now helping each other develop their own theories because of this, because of the necessity to, to work together. Well, um, a lot of us um, work on both. So it's not so surprising that we use some of the, but also, as I said earlier, if there really is a correct physics theory, it should actually <laughs> make predictions both about sure. what we but see in the small scales and big scales. a phenomena that has occurred where, yeah. where people work in both. I mean, you used to have astronomers doing their astronomy. and um, astr Right. I think cosmology ties together the two more than it has in the past. Although, of course, astronomy is using a lot of basic elements of physics sure. to get sure. predictions sure. as well. How about the, the, the concept of various forces that we see, uh, and, and as that ties together with the nature of space-time? Space-time we normally think about as only applying to the very large, at least historically, with relativity. And now, when, um, when we're developing uh, uh, further um, ideas about the standard model and string theory, that we now have to use some of those same ideas of space-time, and you've done some important well, work in this area. A lot of um, cosmology that we've seen so far indicates there are three dimensions of space. So a very important question is that if there are extra dimensions, how would that affect cosmology? Why wouldn't we have seen yet? Does it have any positive influence? And the same is true for particle physics. We haven't seen evidence of these dimensions yet, but it still might be that, they, that at the end of the day, the theory is simpler once these dimensions are included because it might be explaining some mis otherwise mysterious phenomena. And of course, if these dimensions exist and have some role in particle physics, we can't ignore them in cosmology because they're there. So then we want to know what is their influence, at least at early times. And, and what are some possibilities uh, for that as you, as, you, as you are in the state of oh. the art right now in terms of the, the cosmological implications? Um, there are a lot of cosmological implications um, because we can only look back so far and study things in detail. So earlier on, we really don't know what was happening. It could be there are, in some sense, multiple universes, regions that are disconnected because we couldn't have seen them over the lifetime of the universe. It could be that there are extra dimensions of space and there are objects called brains. That term came from membranes. Um, but there could be surfaces in extra dimensions and we could actually be living, for example, on an intersection of those surfaces. Um, it could be that our universe originally consisted of higher dimensions and then well, the objects that were inside were these brains. Um, there are, uh, until we can really pin down ways to experimentally probe these ideas for the better, there's a plethora of ideas of what could be out there, and we'd really like to understand <laughs> if there's some way we can know which one of them is right. L look at the, uh, the, the concept of brains, these large extra dimensions that uh, come from the word membrane, as you said, not these kinds of brains. <laughs> uh, how does that relate to the, the small uh, uh, extra dimensions that are being posited in string theory? Well, it could be that you have both, that you have... Uh, so. We can imagine flatland, which is a two-dimensional world, mm -hmm. in three dimensions. In the same way, we could have a brain, uh, which is a three-dimensional world in higher dimensions. Then the question is, when I go out into the, the extra-dimensional space, which is called the bulk, um, is that extra dimension big or is it small? That extra dimension moving away from the brain might be very tiny. Um, it might still be big enough to have physical consequences, but that just means it's a little bit bigger than what we would call the Planck scale. So it could be <laughs> 10 to the minus 31 centimeters in size, and extraordinarily tiny. 
but it could still have physical consequences. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, so there are two independent notions, this idea of rolling up dimensions and this idea of a brain. It could be the brain uh, warps space-time so much that we don't even need to have a finite-sized space-time. That's another thing we had thought about. Mm -hmm. So basically, there, we think of them in sort of a model-building way, as sort of ingredients that might be there in nature, and could we put them together to make some more compelling ideas for what our world looks like. So to construct the cosmos, you have these ingredients. I like that you're Well, like, we're not like constructing the cosmos. <laughs> we're trying to figure out what the cosmos is constructed okay, as. Fair and enough. so we're trying to see when we put these ingredients together in particular ways, does it match what we've seen so far? Does it have better explanations for what we've seen so far? And are there ways to test these ideas? And the key elements that you have are the, are the uh, stand the model, all the particles and forces that we know about, the cosmological observations, and then and then various theories which predict things like uh, different dimensions or the possibility of different dimensions. Are those the kind of the, the, the core well, ingredients? Well, also quantum mechanics, special sure. relativity, general relativity. Um, so those are the ingredients we're putting together to try to construct, to try to make predictions about what are the consequences of particle physics theories that we propose. And uh, general relativity tells us how the universe itself has evolved given certain amounts of energy density, given certain types of matter, um, given its distribution. So we're trying to put those together to see can we match observations.